Today we're talking about how I grade my Sigma FP Cinema DNG footage. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Anson, and on this channel we talk about filmmaking, specifically budget gear, tutorials, and behind the scenes look at the projects that I'm working on. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. Now, ever since I've been posting about the Sigma FP, I've gotten multiple questions on how I grade my Sigma FP footage. And so that's what we're gonna do here today. Before I go too far into it, I do wanna mention I'm not a colorist. You don't want to necessarily take what I'm doing and say this is absolutely what a pro would do. This is what I've done with my Sigma FP footage and what I've seen the most success with. So that being said, disclaimer over, so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. This is personally just what I do. So let's go now into DaVinci Resolve and talk about how I grade my Sigma FP footage. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a node tree over in the node palette. And we're gonna use six different nodes. I'm gonna explain what these nodes are gonna do individually. The first node, we're gonna adjust any raw settings as well as work on any color or exposure correction. So that's all the things we're gonna do in the first node. Now the second node is all about skin tones. We're gonna to correct the skin tones in the second node. The third node at the top, we're gonna to layer on top of the skin tones, but the third node is where I'm gonna do all of my color grading. The fourth node is gonna just be a layer of the skin tones, so we won't necessarily worry about that right now. And then the last node is gonna be a layer mixer between the skin tones and the color grade, and then going out from that. So that's all that we're doing in that node tree. So let's start off by talking about the first node and adjusting raw settings as well as exposure and color correction. So the first thing I'll do with the Sigma FP is I'll change the footage from project to clip and I'll adjust the color space to the black magic design color space. If I want to do any exposure correcting, maybe something that's a little more extreme, I'll do it here in the raw tab. Now this clip specifically was a little bit more blue than I wanted it and changing the white balance at first didn't really make a ton of difference and so I actually adjusted the color temperature to do a custom white balance. So that's really the only thing I did here. Again, if there's anything extreme that I need to do to the footage, I'll do it in this tab. So those are some of the things I do in the raw tab. Now let's talk about color and exposure correction. The first thing that I'll do is I'll adjust the exposure with my curves. Now I will pull up a parade scope over on the right. And so I'll usually bring down the shadows, raise the highlights, and then adjust the midtones. Now, once I fix the exposure, I will raise the saturation. With a Sigma FP, depending on what I'm looking for, there are times where I'll just boost the saturation all the way, but other times I'll kind of play around with it just depending on what style I want. So for this, we're just going to boost the saturation all the way. And then from there, I'll do some color correction, introducing some colors or taking away some colors. And so that's what I'll do for color correction. And that is all done by eye, just kind of like what makes the most sense. But that's what I'm doing in that first node as far as raw set settings, exposure, and color correction. So let's move now into skin tones. So going into the skin tones, what I'll do first is I'll pull up my vector scopes over on the right. I will make sure that the skin tone line is visible. Once that's done, I'll use my qualifier tool to qualify the skin tones. To better understand and see the colors that I'm isolating, I'll hit Shift H. And once I've done the initial qualification, I'll use a feathering tool to blend things out with the skin tones. And then I'll use a circular power window to isolate the skin tones even more. And the way that I adjust the skin tones is I'll use my color wheel and basically just kind of change the color, either more yellow or more blue. That's what I'll try to do at first. I'll try to just introduce those primary colors. And if I need to go beyond that, then I'll go from there. But that's what I'm doing to adjust the skin tones. And I try to keep the skin tones generally just above the skin tone line, maybe just touching the skin tone line. Now moving on from skin tones, as far as color grading, I really don't do a ton with color grading. I do very minimal. And a lot of times it's teal and orange just because that's easy and I will use my color wheels to do that. So that's all I'm really doing with color grading. Now, if I'm doing something more stylistic, then I may take a little more time to do that. But for this footage, it was really just a simple teal and orange. Now that bottom node, all that's really doing is carrying over the skin tones for the grade. And so we won't really worry with that. And then the last node is a layer mixer. And so I'll make sure that those two nodes are connected using the layer mixer and going into the final output. Now, once I'm done with the grade and I'm happy with the footage, what I'll do is I'll grab a still from that footage and basically use that as a 
lot for my footage that's similar and then make minor adjustments from there. And so really that's how I grade my Sigma FP footage. If you do have any questions about this process, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Support each other. Wash those hands and I'll see you here next time. Peace.